Hello, and thank you for joining us today for the webinar on real-time pipeline monitoring for the energy sector. I'm Grant Swanson, your host for the session, and I'd like to introduce James Stewart Bruges, Head of Product for Clarion, Ben Cleary, CTO for Clarion, and Alex Mikolev, Senior Solutions Architect for Infineon. Welcome. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, so this is James Stuart Bruce speaking. Um, uh, as Grant said, I lead the, the product at Clarion. Uh, Clarion is a British company, a young company based in the UK. And we do both data analytics and we do development of electronics and hardware that goes with it. And so what are we doing? What, what our main focus is around pipeline infrastructure. So pipelines, energy pipelines, oil and gas pipelines, also water pipelines. And our mission is to optimize those, uh, that, that infrastructure, those pipelines. And so there are all sorts of different ways in which uh, this is relevant. Um, for example, uh, you can think about pumps or compressors driving the fluids through pip pipelines. Uh, the, the amount of power that those uh, pumps or compressors use really needs to be optimized because that makes a big difference. Just a small, a small improvement in optimization can make a huge difference. We can think about flow and leak detection. These are things that we can monitor and measure and, um, and detect. We can do predictive maintenance and um, look at how the equipment is running and um, work out when it, when is the best time to do your maintenance on your equipment with analytics that will see problems are, are likely to happen before they actually happen. So really optimizing that, that, that time between uh, maintenance so that you don't do it too early and you don't do it too late. Um, we also can support geohazards. So around a pipeline, you have a lot of hazards um, from, from hillsides or landslides or seismic activity or floods, these kind of things, another area where our software data analytics and hardware can, uh, can, can really support. Uh, so what do we have? Uh, we, we, we have developed uh, some really, really great software, which is designed from the bottom up to be really secure with the latest standards uh, which Ben will talk about in a little, more, little bit more detail later on, probably. Um, but the, the, the great thing about the system is it's, it's very modular and it's scalable. And what sets us apart from other companies that do this type of thing is that we don't just do software and data analytics. We also provide the hardware. We provide our own edge device, which we design ourselves. You can see um, on the right-hand side, you know, this is a device which can go out into the field self-powered, work in a, in a remote location um, and do data analytics in the field, in a remote location so that you don't have to send back very large volumes of data over, the, um, you know, over a satellite link or over a low bandwidth connection. So we develop our own algorithms in-house. Um, we integrate data from third party sources as well. So it's not just data that we capture from our own sensors, from our own hardware. It can be data that is already uh, available in the system from uh, sensors that currently exist. It might be sensors that are already connected to a SCADA system. Uh, all of that kind of data can be ingested. It might be data which is manually collected and ingested, or it might be data that's a third party data source, such as what the commodity price is today, or uh, what the weather forecast is going to be and how the temperature is you know, likely to go up and down. All of these different sort of siloed data sets, when you combine them, pull them together, that's where we can really add value and um, provide some meaningful insights. Not just about what's happening re in real time here and now and, and monitoring real time, but also what was the past? What was the history? What did that look like? and uh, with the, the intention to be able to learn from the past trends, understand the present and being able to then predict what's going to happen in the future and can we get a better grip on being able to see what the best way of running an operation is. So that's enough um, on, on the sort of high level overview. If we start to think about how does this all work, then 
um, what, what we have on the right hand side there is a workflow where you, you start by capturing data, you record data. As soon as you've got data into a system like this, one of the biggest challenges is cleaning up that data. Um, a, a very large amount of time can be spent doing this, and this is one of the areas where we really have good expertise to be able to automate that process, to be able to grab data from multiple different sources and format it, clean it, make it useful, um, capturing all of the valuable insights in that data and without losing any of the critical information, because very often in, in, uh, in data, there's some really valuable information that, that might, you know, might, might not appear to be meaningful on the first glance, but when you understand it, look at it in more detail and in aggregate, uh, there can be some really meaningful insights there. So cleaning data is, is an important and big part of, of that. And then we go through the workflow of you know, doing some, uh, some advanced analysis, uh, which Ben will talk about a bit more uh, later on, but um, one of the things that's really, really key to, to recognize there is that we're, we're not just doing um, simple analysis in real time, we're also able to do some machine learning, some artificial intelligence and some sophisticated data processing um, in real time and on the fly as the data comes in. Uh, which is different from most uh, most systems and a really powerful way of being able to um, process, manipulate, understand and get value from data. Uh, and so the workflow goes on, we, we reveal some insights, we provide the, the visualizations, the communication, the meaning in that data uh, with the objective of being able to understand how better to manage things in future take actions, learn from it, um, optimize things, and then go back, close the loop, going back to, to, to being able to um, uh, uh, keep looking and continuously improve. And so with that, let me hand over to Ben to go into some of the more technical detail on that. Thanks, James. Hi, everybody. I'm Ben. I'm the head of technology. Uh, my role is obviously kind of building out the kind of uh, software sides and, and data ingestion. And I'll be continue, continuing on from here. Um, as, as James has mentioned, we we ingest kind of data from multiple kind of uh, places. Uh, we have our kind of primary proprietary edge con controller. We have our external APIs. As James going to mention, this could be commodity pricing or anything else. And we have also then third-party data integrations too. This could be existing kind of SCADA or field ops or control room or incident kind of uh, uh, management tools. Now, our, our existing our, our architecture looked a lot like this. Uh, we had we were using kind of a RabbitMQ, um, which were able to kind of feed in a number of services. So each one of the services on the left would have to be kind of, kind of written, then maintained. And as I'm sure you're all aware, this becomes quite hard to kind of uh, manage because at, at one point you don't just want to ingest the data, you also want to store it. You want to be able to stream it to a front end. You also want to perform kind of actions on the data in kind of uh, transit. So, so the, the main kind of, kind of challenges that we were facing was we had a lot of moving parts uh, from protocols, which are varying from o OPC to Modbus to MQTT and HTTP2. Um, we often work in a mixed uh, environment, so we would work with on on premise and kind of uh, cloud based tools. Um, the service de de deployments were not a simple task, there were, were lots of them. Uh, we had to have lots of uh, su su supporting tools. All of these then re re required that all their kind of, kind of logging and monitoring and maintenance. And again, third party data integrations, often und undocumented APIs, data uh, formats that weren't the, the greatest and they required a lot of uh, uh, cleaning. We also found that this, this approach was not flexible as we, we first thought. Mm -hmm. Our data team spent probably about 90% of their time having to clean the, the data before they could actually get to work on it. And this is where we were introduced to Infineon la last year. Um, and we, we began to look at that, that open source kind of uh, 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 product uh, and, and Alex. I don't know if you want to say a few words on, uh, on this particular bit. Uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, so, Infineon is a company behind the uh, Fluvio open source uh, data streaming platform. 
Um, so, and uh, we also provide managed services uh, as a part of the Intinian cloud. Uh, so our data streaming platform is built from ground up using Rust, which provides low latency and high performance and programmable guarantees. Uh, um, we also have uh, uh, smart modelers, which allow you to deploy uh, data transformations and data cleaning uh, into streams. Uh, which removes the need of moving data in and out of uh, stream or message queue, like in previous example given by Ben. We also provide an immutable store, so it's not a queue, it's a stream, so you can reread uh, data from there up to retention period. And we provide a, a client uh, native API for uh, Java, JavaScript, Rust, and uh, Node.js clients. Uh, and we also, as a company in Finian, we support uh, our developers. They have Smart Modeler Development Kit and uh, Connected Development Kit, which we'll touch up uh, later. Thank you, Ben. Thank, thank you, Alex. So, so yeah, so once we had, uh, had, had been in, introduced, we began work on uh, adopting this. Uh, the architecture that we now have uh, kind, of, kind of flows in in this way. We have a series of co 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 connectors. These could be MQTT, HTTP, and these are all kind of managed inside the Infineon Cloud uh, uh, service that we use. All of these then allow us to to write and con configure kind of data to be transformed and streamed in. And we have an example um, kind of a pipeline here where we will kind of, uh, serialize to kind of uh, uh, JSON. We may run some change point detection, and then we also want to store the 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 the, the data there. Uh, you 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 may be asking what the difference is between uh, the the previous ar ar architecture and this one is that is that this is all kind of uh, managed inside of 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 the in in Finian Cloud. So our team just get round to writing um, our, our, the the data analysis. So. So the, the the real keys for us was it was a simplified ar architecture. There was an, an efficiency in, in improvement. Our data team can add co 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 connectors, smart modules, and build out the pipelines that they want without really kind of waiting on the the, the dev teams. And it's it, it's extremely extensible, uh, and we'll jump jump into that in just a, a, a minute. Um, the the inline execution of code or these kind of uh, modules is something that that really kind of kind of uh, uh, drew us in and uh, we'll, we'll kind of uh, explain that there we we use it for our data ingestion side so this is from our edge all the way to an existing kind of uh, scada we use it all also for our uh, real-time data vi vi visualization and we also use it for our stl workflow our data team has moved away from the traditional ETL workflow and we're able to just tap into streams uh, uh, of data to begin the uh, uh, analysis. We also um, are beginning to explore the ability to apply kind of AI and ML in stream. So the ability to, to as James kind of, uh, uh, mentioned, perform that in real time has been a bit of a game changer for, for, uh, uh, for us. Now I'm just going to just jump into another screen and we'll run through a demo of, of where it sits and how it works. Uh, let's just give me one second. So, so when you our, our platform is 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 uh, an overview of the the lo, 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 location. Uh, in this instance, we have a map view of the U, UK. We have a couple of, of edge nodes that we've configured for this kind of uh, demo. We have the ability to view kind of tickets and incidents from the home screen. What we're able to do, and this is where part of the Infineon Cloud uh, 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 logs in, is we can actually stream kind of data straight to the, 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 the map. So our kind of ops teams are able to, to get a snapshot of how things are per performing in the, the field. Now, this is just one aspect of where, of where it sits. The other aspects of where we have uh, focused is on our kind of uh, dashboarding side. 
And this is an area that we're quite kind of uh, proud of in that we're able to feed the data from the Infineon cloud over web sockets into our kind of uh, uh, dashboards. And we can get, get a, a real time feed as well as a mix of historical and contextual kind of uh, 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 data, which provide quite a uh, powerful view. Traditionally, our, our dashboards have been more based around kind of uh, SQL and performing a, a, a query. But as you can see here, there's data being streamed in, and, and users have the ability to to add their their their, their own blocks, which are which are are made up of a a query or a or a kind of uh, a stream of data. Now this is all good and fine, but I'm well aware that this kind of uh, uh, audience probably works more with the, the data. So I've prepared uh, another example, which allows us to walk through how we can work with uh, uh, streams and data prints. So what, what we have is first off, this is just a basic kind of a Jupyter Labs environment. So you don't need any particular kind of uh, tooling. For all of this, we're using kind of uh, Python, and we're going to just kind of basically pip install uh, Flu 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 Fluvio, which then will uh, allow us to begin kind of working with the data. So this should all already be installed. It's great. And we're going to look at three ways of working uh, uh, with this. We can work in a traditional kind of uh, client-based way, which is where we're going to hook into the stream of data externally, work with the, the data and filter and, uh, and parse it. We're going to look at how we can use web, web, web assembly as part of this. And we're also going to have a quick look at how we can apply a web assembly kind of uh, module or this smart mo uh, module to the actual stream it, it, it itself. So we have a, a, a number of uh, imports here. We're also going to load the uh, the environment file. Uh, this will enable us then to kind of uh, log into the Fluvio cloud. Uh, uh, as Alex uh, uh, mentioned, in Infineon have a cloud managed uh, um, service, and that is the, the service that that we we use. But Fluvio is an open source kind of, kind of product, so if you needed to run it kind of locally, internally, then you can do as well. Um, so let's just kind of uh, sign into this. So we should get a, a message back to say it's all kind of uh, linked in. Fantastic. Now what, what we have is a couple of functions which um, we wrote up, which allow us to grab some data from a topic inside of Fluvio and we'll be able to set the, the amount of messages that we want to see. So in this instance, we're just going to uh, grab data from the MQTT kind of, uh, uh, topic on partition kind of, uh, zero, and we're going to get the, the first 10. And then what we're going to do is just print the, the, the first one out. So well, that, that, that should do that, that, that should run, run, run through, go grab the data, and then allow us to iterate through each one. You can see at this stage the message is not that useful or, or, or friendly. We have the MQTT kind of topic and a payload in, which is just a, a list of bytes. So what we need to do is we need to manually clean and uh, process this. So what, what we have is we have a function that we wrote up that will clean the, the, the data um, and then it will uh, just spit this back out as a JSON string. And if we run this here, you can see that that that, that message has uh, has worked. We now have all of the keys uh, and values, and you can straight away just pop these into a, a data frame. And if you had more more than just one in there, you'd be able to continue on on working. And that that is all good and fine, but that is a very tra traditional way. And that was a way we we're trying to avoid trying to to, to work uh, uh, with this. And one of the the reasons why um, Infineon and Fluvio were so attractive to us was our ability to leverage uh, Rust to build out uh, WebAssembly kind of uh, modules. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, here's a, a snippet of some some Rust code. 
Um, the Affinion team have been kind, kind enough to build out a kind of a tool chain that allow you to build out uh, kind of modules based around a kind of filter, map, a filter map, array map, and everything else. So it allows you to kind of quickly get up and running without having to do everything by your, your yourself. What, what we have here is a basic kind of uh, a map. So it, every record, kind of record that goes through this will be mapped. And what all we want to do here is we want to, to pass, we, we, we've taken that kind of uh, Python code, converted it to uh, Rust, and that is what will be, 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 be sent out. Where there's an error, we'll also get that kind of, uh, of error into the, the queue as well. So if we jump back to this, you can see that we've just imported two extra kind of, of, of imports. We have the consumer kind of config and then the smart module kind, which is an e, e, enum. We just built out a really basic configuration here. And then we, we, we mod, kind of mod, modified the previous uh, uh, function that allows us to pass in this, the, this consumer config configuration. And that then allows us to to call the function here. And if we run this one now, we should get, again, a nice kind of set of uh, records here. Now, with that, that means we haven't had to do any kind of uh, processing inside of uh, Python. It's all done as part of the WebAssembly kind of uh, module. That also means it's portable and shareable across your team or, or others. And it also means that it can actually be applied down at um, the edge. One of the, the other areas that we were interested in is exploring how we can use web WebAssembly down at the edge on our edge con con controller to try and help uh, kind of streamline the data kind of cleansing and processing before that data even hits the, the cloud. So uh, again, what we'll do, we'll take the, the list of uh, records, we'll put these into a data frame, and then as, as you can see, it is all, all, all already there. We, this, this particular way of uh, working means that your data teams don't have to, to rewrite the, the same code. They have a web, web, web assembly code, which is extremely fast. And it also means that, that the security of, of your, your, your code goes up as well. Web assembly kind of, kind of modules can't can't particularly do much so it's just it's built for a particularly safe kind of uh, uh, purpose now those two kind of, kind of methods are great but they still require you to kind of manage put these on and share them around your 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 team one of the things that i i mentioned in the the slides kind of uh, prior is our ability to move this into the stream and that that was the the biggest self for us and that we can empower our, our data teams to take to, to take their kind of cleaning and passing and basically the 90 percent of their, their their work probably into a series of modules that can move this to where the, the data is and this is how this particularly looks now so we can con con configure a, a yaml file and we can say we want uh, the mqtt type source here we can configure the broker. Then what we can do, we can build out a series of, of steps here that will put, that will be de deployed with this configuration. So every kind of message that comes in on this kind of uh, topic will will run through these steps. So for us, we've used it to kind of clean and pass these extra bytes that, that, that unfortunately will occasionally kind of uh, creep in on time to time. We've used it to uh, perform some threshold uh, analysis. And all of this is done in stream, which means our data teams don't need to do all of that, that, that kind of, uh, uh, of manual work. Now, just to show you how that actually works, if we literally run this now, these two lines of code, we get a, a data frame back of data on there, which has been passed. Oh, there's obviously still kind of a cleanup where there's kind of not, not numbers and, and various things. But in the general gist of being able to get your data team there, 
this particular way has been a powerful uh, 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 feature for for us. This you 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 can also then kind of publish this onto what Infineon call their smart module hub. So that means all of your team can can pull it from one place. So they don't need to kind of share kind of uh, repos or binaries or anything else. It becomes quite a powerful tool that that enables uh, teams to work uh, uh, faster. So that's where that's where I will come back and I guess uh, Grant back over to to you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ben. That was um, very insightful presentation there. And I had messaged, we have a couple of questions coming in. Um, the first one's asking, did you have any Rust developers prior to using Fluvio? Uh, no. <laughs> um, one of my, my first experience of Rust was actually creating a pull request on the Python SDK. Um, I was was really interested in using it, and I I wanted to had to have a go at learning it, and it, it seemed like a good time to well in, in a good a good place. Um, so no, you you probably don't need to actually know too much Rust to do what you want to do. It obviously helps. But it's also relatively, it's a good skill to learn, I would say. Excellent. And anyone from the audience, feel free to continue to put questions into the question window. We have quite a few more here. Um, the next one is where you talked about data security. How do you ensure data security in the platform? So from the edge all the way up to the cloud, um, Everything is is uh, uh, encrypted in transit. Uh, we also kind of leverage uh, quite s sophisticated security at the edge by leveraging T TPM kind of kind of modules and uh, uh, and various things. We also kind of kind of ensure that data is encrypted um, at, at at rest, um, and you know we we ensure that that all of our kind of of uh, vendors that, that that we use, such as Infineon, you know, they take security just as as, as seriously as we do. Um, so yeah, we've got no 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 con concerns there. Excellent, thank you. Um, next question is, what sets Clarion apart from other data analytics companies? The, the real kind of uh, difference is that we have the ability to go go full end to to to, to end. So we have our edge controller, which is about the size of a Raspberry Pi kind of thing that can be plugged in at the field. So where there are data gaps, um, we don't just uh, we don't just say we can't get that data, but actually we we have a, a, an answer. We we can, can put our edge controller in. Plug in this, the, the the various bits of of our kit. This could be a a, um, a sensor. It could be a pump. It could be anything. And we we get we get that data and securely then transmit that up into the kind of kind of cloud. I'd say one of the other uh, kind of kind of uh, uh, differences that we have is is actually the Infineon cloud. It sounds a bit a bit kind of uh, uh, tongue in cheek. But actually, being able to do a lot of the cleaning and processing in stream uh, means that our data team it, it is relatively small, but we're actually able to do a lot of uh, processing again by by leveraging those kind of, kind of modules and, and workflows. James, I don't 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 know. Do you have any other kind of, kind of answers there? No, I think I think those are the those are the main ones you the, you covered there. It's the ability to to, um, to to perform the data analytics and you know really powerful transformations in real time on the fly, uh, which is which is you know quite quite special, quite impressive. And um, as you said, the, the combination of not just the data analytics but also the hardware, the provision of um, edge computing and local processing from the field. So. For example, if the data that we're trying to require, acquire 
is a high, highly dense amount of data. For example, if there's um, a bit of rotating machinery, a pump or a compressor, and you want to know, um, you know what's happening with the vibration on that, well, well, you need to sample that vibration data, um, perhaps from an accelerometer, and you need to sample that data uh, fast, and it's a lot of, lot of data that's being acquired. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to send all of that data um, over a, uh, a, a communications um, medium you know, via a satellite link or a 4G or whatever over the internet doesn't make sense. So being able to process that data locally, apply some insights up and be able to then update, upgrade and improve that analysis in the edge and transmit the, um, the intelligent version of it, the summarized version of it, for example, the frequency spectrum, um, that, that's powerful. Uh, and and that's, that, that's something different um, from, from most of the companies that are doing things with digital transformation and data analytics. Excellent, thank you. Um, so the next question, I know the, the demo that you showed with the map and the dashboards um, it is a real live project. And this next question is, is, do you have reference projects in the oil industry? So I'm not sure if we can disclose that information of who that is, or, um, but is there any um, referenceable projects in the oil industry? Uh, I guess, James, would you like to take that, that, that one? So, so we, we, we do, and I, I, I can't say who it is, but we do, we have um, some of our equipment on a pipeline monitoring uh, flow and it is feeding into an airport. Um, that particular pipeline that I'm thinking of is doing um, real time analysis of the data that goes by in order to automatically identify uh, the volumes and the batches that are going through, so it, it generates a report uh, which which tells you, okay, this is the amount of flow, this is the volume, and then this is the price, um, the value of the commodity, and it does this all automatically, monitoring uh, what exactly what's what's going on in that. We're also working with another organisation where um, the pipeline is supplying different product types and we are supporting efficiency gain improvements on that pipeline so in other words how do we make sure that the pipeline is running at the most efficient manner uh, looking at pump operations flow rates and what you can do to optimize that um, this is particularly relevant in the context of uh, electricity prices that are variable and going high because these are these are electric pumps and uh, when when you pump and how much you pump and how much power you put in your pumps is all very relevant to to that so there are a couple i can uh, i can mention but um but yes and we're also working with a um a water company um with a similar type of similar type of problem is the first step of step of there which is looking again at pump efficiency and optimization of energy going into that <laughs> Excellent. And for the, the the person who asked that question, um, we can connect um, offline in a meeting and get more detailed into those projects. So we'll reach out to you shortly after the webinar. Um, the next question that just came in is, have you reached a limit yet on how many d different edge sensors you can pull into your platform? Uh, no. <laughs> um, no. No, we've we've uh, performed some uh, virtualized kind of, kind of testing with uh, ridiculous amounts. Um, I have to say, the Infineon Cloud has handled it all like a, a champ. It's gone through it, um, no kind of problems. Um, so we're really kind of uh, uh, happy. There's the one thing we did have to do was uh, move our MQTT kind of broker to a clustered uh, uh, environment and load balance that to uh, 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 ensure that. Uh, so we actually ran into problems on the MQTT side before uh, the, the actual kind of uh, uh, streams. Excellent, thank you. Um, so we have just a few more minutes here. If anyone has questions, um, continue to type them into the chat window. The next question I think is um, more relevant to Alex Mikolev. Um, 
is can we can you write smart modules in other languages and are do you have the ability to chain transformations uh, so yes you can uh, chain transformations um, on connectors that's where uh, the yaml file which been demonstrated uh, have a keyword div after that you can apply multiple transformations we provide uh, JSON to SQL transformations and Jolt uh, JSON, uh, transform, JSON language transformations uh, supported by Infineon. And um, uh, there is a walk on the way of being able to uh, write uh, smart modules um, in Python, uh, but currently the only supported language for smart modules is Rust. Excellent. Um, looks like we have one more question here. Um, give me just a moment. Uh, so is, I think this one's more relevant to you again, Alex. Um, can, can you republish topics from inside a smart module? Currently, no. So smart module is... Um, so the answer to that question is actually complicated. Uh, not the way how it's described. Uh, you can't directly republish into two separate topics, uh, but there is a option of creating different types of records and publishing it into the same stream. So the stream isn't the queue, so it can contain multiple uh, types of records. Uh, so I think uh, whoever is interested in discussing what is the best way of architecturing uh data around streams i'm quite happy to uh, support that conversation excellent well thank you alex thank you james thank you ben for the outstanding presentation here um for the audience we will follow up with a recording of the webinar and we appreciate your time today thank you so much for joining us thank you thank you yeah.